Nine months ago, I signed up to one of the toughest challenges a human can put their body through, the marathon. It took literally minutes to enter, and within a blink of an eye, my name was in for the Manchester Marathon 2024. A lot of things have changed over the last nine months. I've changed jobs, I've travelled to new places, and I've put myself through a couple of injuries. But I always had this countdown clock in the back of my mind to April 14th, 2024, when I knew I'd be running the Manchester Marathon. Now, over the last nine months, I have worked tirelessly to try and get my fitness back to a level I'm happy with. But the real grind starts right now with these next 15 weeks of marathon training. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Beginner Build episode one. I come from a very competitive sporting background, but this marathon is going to test my body in ways I have never experienced before. I am fully ready for the early mornings, the painful workouts, and the days where I'm genuinely going to question my life choices. Because the best part is, it's all going to be documented. I haven't started this series just to have a memento to look back on. I've started this series to create a collection of videos where I can genuinely show you everything I've learned from pushing my body to run 26.2 miles in one go. That still sounds like such a big distance. So if you fancy following along for the journey, hit that subscribe button and let's dive into what you can expect from the next 15 weeks of training. Let's start with the most important part of running a marathon, the training plan. This is a 16 week training plan, which I started on December 25th, Merry Christmas, and will end on April 14th, the day of the race. Each week will consist of four planned runs that will happen on alternating days of the week. So for me, that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. My long run will 99% of the time always be done on a Sunday. So to help recover from this, my Monday run will always be done at an easy recovery pace. And then for the remaining runs on Wednesday and Friday, there'll be a mix of interval workouts, speed sessions, and more easy miles just to keep the legs ticking over. My weekly mileage is going to average out somewhere around 35 to 40 miles per week with my peak week being just shy of a 50 mile week. Now, just for some context, the furthest I have ever ran in a week is just over 30 miles. So I would really appreciate it if you include me in your prayers tonight. And when all of that data gets taken into account by my training app runner, it's predicted a race time of somewhere in the region of 3 hours 11 to 3 hours 17, which I believe is somewhere in the region of 7 minutes 20 to 7 minutes 35 per mile. Reading those stats honestly blows my mind because I can't imagine running 26.2 miles right now, let alone at those paces, so this plan better work. Now, running a marathon is obviously going to put so much more stress on my body's joints and muscles, and I would kind of like to be able to walk after running it, so I've joined the gym again. The primary reason for me rejoining the gym is, firstly, I want to help improve my joint stability, but I also want to improve my muscles lactate threshold. This is when lactic acid builds up within your muscles and this is what causes fatigue whilst running. One thing I really didn't want to do is have days where I would run and go to the gym on the same day as I feel like this would hinder my progress more than it would help it. So to help avoid this, I've planned my gym sessions to be on a Tuesday and a Saturday. This way I can be fully recovered for all of the sessions and really focus my mind on trying to hit all of the targets required within that 
workout. Along with joining the gym again, I've also started to massively prioritize rest and recovery for the next 16 weeks. In terms of sleep, the golden ratio for me is eight hours or more. This provides me with more than enough energy to complete a full day of work at my nine to five and then still have energy left over to either go on a run or go to the gym. And I'm pretty happy to say over the last 10 days, I've been doing pretty good. So in the last 10 days, I've averaged eight hours and 37 minutes of sleep per night. And with that, I haven't felt like there's been a session where I haven't had enough energy to complete it. Touch wood. And then this should be a given, but I'm going to include it anyways. I'm making sure before and after every workout or run, I'm doing a warm up and cool down that's actually going to prepare my body for that session. And then on Thursdays, which is my only full rest day, I'm making sure to do an at home mobility workout just to keep my joints and muscles in the best condition possible. God, anyone would think I'm actually taking this thing seriously. I like to think of myself as quite an ambitious person. I don't, do I mean ambitious or do I mean optimistic? Either way, I've set myself some goals for the race and for this YouTube series. It makes sense to start with my target race time. And as I said previously in the video, my training app has spat out a predicted time of somewhere between three hours 11 and three hours 17. So this is going to be plan A for the day. However, someone who fails to prepare is preparing to fail don't have a clue who said that, but it's a cool saying. So I need a plan B. When I originally signed up for this marathon back in April 2023, it asked me for a predicted time target and I'm pretty sure I put three hours and 30 minutes on the dot. So this is going to be our plan B. The only other goal I have for the marathon is I do not want to walk a single part of it. I want to get across that finish line knowing I have ran the entire 26.2 miles. And there's no real reason for this other than it's just a cool personal target and I want some bragging rights on my family. Moving on to the goals for the series, these are going to be a little bit more vague, but that does mean I can get kind of creative when it comes to actually achieving them. Probably one of the biggest goals I have for this series is I either want to inspire one person to actually take up running for the first time in their life or inspire someone to get back into running after a long time not doing it. It sounds really cliche, but the only reason I've ever posted videos on the internet is to try and help other people in a similar situation to me. So if I can help one person put their shoes on and get out the door running, that will be a massive achievement in my eyes. And then my only other real goal for this series is I want it to be as real and authentic as possible. That will include showing the lowest points on camera and documenting my life like I have never done before. But I want to do this in the hopes it will make the videos so much more relatable for you guys watching at home to actually apply the things I'm talking about to your own lives and even your own marathon journeys. Because let's be fair, what is the point in glorifying marathon training? Nothing about running 26.2 miles is going to be pretty. Apart from the shoes, the shoes are pretty fire. And you best believe in 16 weeks time, I'm coming straight back to this video to see if we've achieved these goals. Because if I didn't, I'm going to have to keep running marathons until I do. I won't lie to you, I am bricking it. So much can change over the course of three hours and there is so much that's out of my control when it comes to this marathon. But I'm really hoping with my training plan and the comments on these videos, I can put myself in the best place possible when it comes to race day. Now, no one enjoys running alone. So if you're planning to run a marathon at some point this year, leave a comment below letting me know how your training is going. I'd love to hear things that are working for other people so that I can try and incorporate the these same things into my training plan. And if there's any mistakes you've made that I should try and avoid, let me know about them too. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like as it means so much more to me than you might think. It also helps for my channel to get seen by other viewers just like yourselves. Today's video was just the beginning of the series and I'm going to try my absolute hardest to get as much value into these videos as possible. So if you want to follow along with my marathon journey, hit that subscribe button below so you do not miss a single video. That is all from me today. I hope you all had an amazing new year and I'll catch you all in the next one. Remember this. <laughs>